So I will be talking about quantum and classical registers, actually more about the quantum ones. And the overview of my talk is basically two parts. First, I will explain what is the trouble with quantum registers and uh, especially with um, how to formalize them and so on. And uh, in the second part, I will show you my solution to that problem. So let me start with the sad part. For this, I would like to give you a tiny example and look at how we think there about quantum uh, registers. So look at this little uh, program here. I drew it as a quantum circuit. Here I wrote the same program as a uh, in a little ad hoc programming language because it's basically the same thing. Um, and you see here, I uh, apply a Hadamard to register Y, and then I apply a C naught with control on Z and controlling the and flipping the X register. So, if I want to give some semantics uh, or some meaning to the thing to applying H to register Y, basically I would come up with the fact that this described as a matrix or an operator would be the identity on one qubit. Tensor Hadamard, tensor the identity on two qubits. So it seems pretty easy to say what it means that a certain um, unitary or projector is applied to a certain register. But now let us look at the C0. So what would be the corresponding expression for the C0? So obviously I tensor with an identity here, maybe. Um, but the C0, well, one problem is it goes in the wrong direction and it skips a qubit. So one operation that we might need first if we want to write this the semantics of this down in terms of the c naught matrix is first a unitary uh, a swap unitary here written u sigma that swaps two lines this would allow me to turn around a um, c naught and if i uh, use this and plug everything together i can indeed write down the c naught but as you see this is already quite uh, starting to get rather unreadable so instead of just saying C0 on X and Z, I actually have to break it down in a product of um, five different tensor products. And actually, I've been even cheating here because I've been assuming that the tensor product is associative. But in general, the tensor product is not associative because um, if I take different Hilbert spaces and tensor them together, I just get um, Hilbert spaces that are isomorphic but not identical. This may seem like a minor issue, but if you want to, for example, formalize your semantics, um, or if you um, do not see your Hilbert spaces just as a, um, a uh, C to, the, to some integer, but give it some more structured type, then this equality would not hold. So additionally, you need to add um, plug in isomorphisms U alpha that map X, Y, Z to X, Y, Z. So we need to add those as well for to make this well typed and we get this. And I invite you not now to try actually to come up with this term so it talk uh, I think the preparation of this talk was dominated by the time of figuring out what the C not on these two wires is. So I would say this is definitely not a um, pleasant situation. So we have the problem that when we have registers in our quantum memory and we want to address them, um, this can be quite complex uh, from the semantic point of view. So I'm not talking about implementation here, uh, even in the tiniest programs. And the result we get, this long expression that was here in the background, more looks like something that a compiler should output and not something that is our specification of the behavior of the register. And you might say, well, we can generate those terms with a computer. But if you want to do that, we first need to have a, a semantics what it means to do something on register X before we can at least prove that uh, this long term here actually does apply C0 on a certain register. There are more problems. So um, if you read um, literature that somewhere use quantum register and basically any, anything that talks about quantum information, quantum programming or something, will in some way use um, quantum registers in some form or other. 
then you will often see in pseudo code or informal discussions um, sentences like the following. For example, you might have, we apply the unitary U to X in the diagonal basis. Yeah, so we have a, a register X and we just think of it as a register in a different basis. Totally intuitive, but it means that X in the diagonal basis is somehow also a register when X is a register. Trying to formalize that is difficult because it seems to be a very different thing than just, I don't know, a continuous sequence of qubits in our memory. Or if you have a register X, we might so talk about XI, which is the ith qubit of X. So now suddenly the ith qubit of X is also treated as a register. Informally, this may be very easy. In a formal modeling, it's tricky because depending on what we define what a register is, then a part of a register might not be a register anymore. So we have then different concepts if we're talking about applying something to the ith qubit. Or here we have the situation where we say, initialize x and y with an EPR pair, or apply C0 to x, y, or something like this. So now we have the problem that here suddenly in, for, in this informal discussion, it is as if x, y is just a register, something we can apply a gate to. I mean, you have seen that in uh, Michael Hicks' talk earlier today, where they had in their semantics uh, or in their syntax, they had to define two kinds of gates, one that takes one argument, one that takes two. Um, but informally, we just think the one that takes two arguments is just applying applied to a composed register. So in the informal world, we can compose registers. Or here we have something that at the first glance may not even seem related to quantum registers. But actually, if you think of a quantum register as just being a subsystem of an existing of, of a larger system, then um, a lot of things in physics are actually something which would also be quantum registers. For example, the position of a particle is a register in a system that has several particles that have um, positions. Um, I mean, a register is nothing else than a subsystem. But the momentum of this particle is, from the physical point of view, as justified to be called a register as the position. So why would one be a register and the other not? So a, a, an all-encompassing notion of what a register might be would actually have to be able to say both position and momentum are registers in the same memory, but they are not separate areas in that memory. So these are a few examples of things that you may encounter informally, and that make it difficult to formalize what a register actually is. Um, and there are a number of pro pro approaches for this, because whenever you define a, um, a imperative quantum language, you have to somehow say what a register is. Um, but they are, to my, to my feeling, usually somewhat ad hoc. So for example, you might have, um, I understand this is how it's done in the Squire, that a, a register is basically a sequence of qubits in your memory. Uh, and you address them with indices. And then if you have a unitary, you need to do some calculation and remapping of, indi uh, of indices in your matrix and so on to lift your operation to the whole space. Um, but um, this becomes more difficult if, for example, you have infinite dimensional things, then um, I'm not sure this approach works at all. And um, this index um, arithmetic seems to make it rather specific to a particular way how your memory is um, modeled and so on. Then you could do it like I showed you with swap matrices, association, associativity matrices, but I've shown you that this uh, blows up. Or you could try more, more um, general approaches like have a um, tensor product of a whole family of spaces from variables. But all these are, uh, approaches have different limitations and or are quite complicated. So none of them would cover all the use cases that I showed you. So we have the problem that we actually need a generic definition of what a quantum register is if we want simple and clean uh, semantics. That it should capture all the informal use examples that I showed you. And I would want it to be to have no fiddling, to be 
like no fiddling with indices and so on to have like a simple clean abstract definition independent of the memory model and i would like it to be easy to formalize if you go to some theorem prover like um, in our case isabel Hall. so this is the reason why i'm unhappy with the current situation fortunately the things we want here are actually our results in this paper um, and therefore now i will be showing you why how I got heavy again. And everything I'm saying actually also applies to classical registers. So a lot of the challenges are also present even in the classical case when you ask yourself what the variable is. So we have a more general theory that um, encompasses the classical and the quantum world as specific cases. But in this talk, I will just focus on the quantum um, situation and completely ignore uh, the classical world. So what is a quantum register in our model? So um, a register, probably in any approach, would have some um, Hilbert space that describes the type of data that this register can contain. And you would probably also have a Hilbert space that de determines the, uh, what, the whole, what kind of quantum system the whole memory is. So this could be, for example, C to the two, if it's a one qubit register, and this could be a multi-qubit system. And any register should, given uh, any unitary or projector or other operation on HA, on its space, it should tell us, or let's, let's somehow derive what it means to apply U on HA. So what does it do? What would this operation then do to the whole space? So if I note, if I apply U to the register F, what would this do to my whole quantum system? And it turns out this allows us to define what registers are. So a register, um, and here I'm limiting myself to the finite, dim finite dimensional case, but we can lift this to the infinite dimensional one with extra care, is just a function that takes any linear operation on the Hilbert space HA, which is the type of the register, and maps it to a linear operation on the space of all memories on the space of memories. So that is um, kind of almost obvious that uh, a register should give that. But the point is that we will see that if we choose additional constraints wisely, we get a lot of desirable properties that solve the problems I have described before. These additional properties are the function f should also be linear. It should be multiplicative. And it should preserve adjoints. So there's motivation for all of these, but I uh, will not go through them. So take them just as a, a given. So what does this give us? So if we define registers in this way, um, first of all, we can easily um, model elementary registers, for example, the fifth qubit out of uh, 10 qubits or something like this. And given the semantics of a register, we can very easily describe the semantics of a programming language. For example, apply u on x. The semantics of this, like what, how it operates as a unitary in the whole space, is just x of u, because that's what x tells us. And we have a lot of uh, powerful operations. The most interesting is the pairing. So if I have two registers that are compatible in a certain way that I will skip for now at the moment, we can define the pair. So what it means to take two registers and make them into one bigger register. Um, and this register, again, has the properties from the slide before. And therefore, once I have defined apply u on x, even though x is not treated as a list of register or anything, I can just plug in the pair in here. And suddenly, my semantics can deal with tuples of registers, even though the semantics never thought of them. I can do what I call chaining. So if I have a, can have a register inside another register, so for example, if I have a register y, then I can define another register that corresponds to the ith qubit inside a memory that is actually just the state of y. And I plug them together, and I get a register that describes the ith qubit of y. And I can do basis transformation. So the register x um, transformed by unitary is also a register. And we can combine all these things to um, express things that would be very different, difficult with any of the existing approaches. So what, was our, what is our overall contribution? We defined a register category. 
Um, we instantiated it in the quantum and the classical case. The quantum case is what I have just shown you. This works even in the infinite dimensional case, although there are some extra care is uh, needed because you can't just talk about linear function. You need to take into account all the topology. We formalized the theory of quantum and classical registers in Isabel Hall, although only for the finite dimensional case. And we analyzed quantum teleportation as an example, uh, which involved writing a tiny programming language, writing a whole logic, um, and using our register formalism. And it turns out it makes everything much easier. So uh, as the last thing, I want to just give you a tiny glance of the teleportation case. So you see, if we want to define a, uh, registers, we can just abstractly define them by just declaring their type. We do not, uh, we, uh, and any proofs afterwards will work for any type of memory. Then here you have an example in the actual program for teleportation, how we use the pairs uh, to apply something on two, um, on two registers. And here's an example of the final statement in our whole, where, in our whole logic, where we would, for example, say something like if the registers X, A, B jointly are in state Psi, and then we teleport. Um, then afterwards, the some other three registers are jointly in state Psi. So this concludes what I wanted to show you about registers. And um, following the previous talk, um, I will also make a shameless plug. So if these kind of things sound interesting to you, um, there are open postdoc and PhD positions. So feel free to contact me and, and or look at this URL. Thank you for your attention.